Okay, hi everyone, and uh, welcome to my series of uh, tutorials and hands on lectures about implementation of uh, machine learning in the assessment of power system uh, assets. Uh, how we use machine learning technology algorithms so that we can assess uh, power system uh, power system assets so this will be like uh, the starting or the first uh, tutorial but then it will be followed by many other tutorials to address different aspects of using machine learning in the assessment of power system power system assets okay so uh, to start with this is a very important question that we'd like to answer at the beginning. Uh, is application of uh, machine learning is a tool or an objective? Now, uh, with the current situation, and there is a lot of funding, a lot of uh, projects about using machine learning, everyone will just want to jump there and grab some of this money and some of this fund. But there is a fundamental question that we need to answer that. Uh, and we need to understand that machine learning is actually is a tool. Okay. And it should be able to help us to solve a problem or make solving the problem more efficient. But it's not an objective by itself, meaning that I don't want to enforce the machine learning in some problems that can be solved easily without the need of use machine learning. So this is something fundamental question that we need to always think about before we start application of uh, machine learning. Uh, the second question is, does my problem need machine learning? Sometimes, as I said, we just try to enforce it. We, we, sometimes we want to just use the machine learning for the sake of use machine learning so that uh, the paper can be accepted and looks more, uh, more fancy. So this is something fundamental that we'd like, I'd like to address at the beginning of my, of my uh, tutorial. Now, this tutorial, there is no need for any background. The title of it using machine learning to apply it in the power system asset uh, assessment. You don't need to have any machine learning background. You don't need to have any background, uh, any programming background as well. Why? Because I will be using Wika. Wika is an open source, very easily uh, or friendly. Uh, it's very uh, user friendly. Uh, that you can apply it without even knowing uh, how those uh, algorithms work. Okay. However, I will try whenever I need to apply a classifier, I will give a very brief description so that we have the general idea uh, of that classifier or that algorithm without going into details. So I will try to uh, eliminate the math use so that if you don't have a probability background, you don't have programming background, you don't need to worry at all about it. And actually this tutorial for you. Second point is, this is mainly the application I choose to apply machine learning is power system assets. Why? Because that is my field, actually. Uh, I have more than 30 years of experience dealing with power system assets from the industry perspective, as well as from the academia uh, perspective as well. So. What if I don't have background in power system assets? Again, there is no problem at all because whenever I will try to use certain data, uh, uh, I will give the needed background. I will assume that you don't have any background on, the, on that specific asset or in this uh, specific installation or uh, this specific uh, problem, and I will give you the, the background from scratch. So there is no need to have any prior background before you join me in this uh, list, list set of uh, tutorials. Okay, so the first tutorial, it will be uh, composed of uh, four parts. Introduction to machine learning, very, very high level, very general. Then I will start using some data uh, about transformers. I will describe the data uh, in part two. Uh, in part three and four, I will apply a simple regression and classification problem to this data. So these four set of lectures, it will introduce the subject to you of machine learning. Later on, I will have other tutorials with again divided to some sub lectures. I will talk about more advanced topics uh, and more interesting things and different data sets as well as we as we progress. Uh, so 
The first part is the introduction to machine machine learning. Okay, so basically we'll start with supervised learning. Later on, we'll come to the unsupervised uh, learning, but at this stage, we'll talk about supervised learning. What is it basically? Basically, you have a set of labeled data. Okay, and we said labeled data means the following. It means that this data, you already know what is the correct answer to it. Okay, so you have this labeled data, so you have the data and its corresponding output. And then you do the training. Like for example, you wanna teach someone that this is a circuit, okay? So you show him different pictures of circuits. This is a circuit, this is a circuit. Then when you show him something else like a phone, they will know that this is a phone and these are circuits, okay? Uh, this is just a very, uh, uh, primitive example to show you what do we mean by supervise there, there's someone that supervising the learning the learning process using certain label data now we will be solving two main problems the first one is regression problem what do we mean by regression problem that we want to predict a number a value okay? like for example in this example I am trying to predict the equivalent salt deposit density on the insulators as a value, as a number, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.56. So this is considered as a regression problem. The second problem called classification problem. Here, I want to predict a class. Like for example here, these are insulators uh, and some of them, they have a crack, broken or a hole. So these are the three classes I'm trying to predict. To the right, these are uh, the what we call the hydrophobicity class of the insulators, or how good or how bad is the uh, surface of uh, insulators. Here specifically, silicon rubber or polymeric uh, insulators. This is a class we call HC class one, and this is HC class six. Without going into details, we will, we will come to this problem in the in the future, but the whole idea here in a classification problem, you try to predict a class, not a number like in the regression problem. So basically what we do, we have a set of data, okay? We will split the data into two sets, training and testing, and we don't mix them. Keep the testing on the side and keep the training on the side. You take the training data and you use your machine learning algorithms. And we will have many of those algorithms. We will start to learn about them again from the conceptual point of view without going into uh, details until your model is well trained. You, you have a good classifier. Then you use your test data, the data that is not used in the training to see can my model predict the value if it's a regression or the class if it's a classification problem or not? Okay, and there are some metrics to tell you how good or how bad is your, your classifier. So one way, and this is what we'll start with, we call it the 10 fold cross validation. So basically what we do, this is your data. We split it into 10 equally distributed pieces of data. Okay, let's have, we have 100 points. We split it 10 each. Then we will take one tenth of that and put it on the side. This will be my testing. And I will use the nine, uh, different, nine sets for the, for the training. Once done, test. Then what I do, I return back what I used in, as a testing and take another portion for, uh, for and keep it for the testing and do use the rest for the training and keep doing this 10 different times. And then the results will be the, uh, the total average of the 10 times. This is why we call it 10 fold cross validation. You can have five fold cross validation, three fold, it, it's up to you. And we, this is the one that we'll be using to start with, but we will use a different ways for the testing. For example, 
I will uh, in, in the future we will have a test data from one uh, sorry a training data from one source, and then the test data from completely different company from a completely different country, and we use it for the testing as well. So as we progress, we will start to see different different cases. Now, how I evaluate my model? How I can tell is my model good or bad? Now, if it is regression, there are certain metrics. If it is classification, there are some other metrics. So for the, uh, for the regression, we have the correlation coefficient, which is equal to the covariance of y hat t with y t. Now, y hat is what you predict, and y t is the actual value. Divided by the standard deviation of y hat times the standard deviation of y t. Of course, we don't need to know the formula for that. I will show you the numbers. Later on, when you use Wicca, you don't need to apply any formula. It is it's there, it's programmed there. Now, but here one, one thing you need to understand. This is this is what you need to, to know that for perfect correlation, this should the number is one. So the higher the cross correlation, the better is your value. This is what you need to know. For example, if there is no any correlation at all between what you predict and what is the actual value, you'll see here very random distribution and you have this is like zero. So the higher this, the better. The other metrics, the lower the better. The, the better. For example, we have mean absolute error, which is basically you uh, sum every single individual value, you subtract what you predict, minus what you what is the actual value take the absolute value this is what's called absolute divide by the number of samples and this is what we call it mean there is the root mean square error relative absolute error and root relative uh, squared error so you can see all the formulas all of them the uh, from two to, to five the lower the better of course when you compare between the different models and you want to keep this because this is all are different forms of error regardless of the formula basically you are subtracting what you predict or the actual value so if they are matching you will get zero so this is why the the bit the lower the the, the better so this is when it comes to the regression model if we talk about the classification model we have different uh, criteria or different metrics okay so the most common one is the accuracy rate. Remember, now I am predicting classes. Assume I have three classes, good, medium, and bad. These are the three classes that I, I have. Now, when I try to predict them, it could be true positive. It means that, for example, uh, the, the class itself is, is, was, was uh, positive, and I am predicting it correctly, okay? So this is called true, true positive, or it could be true, true negative, okay? So uh, you have uh, something that is, for example, uh, considered as bad, and you consider it as, as bad as well. But also you could have false, false negative, something bad, you said it's good, or false positive, something good, you said it's bad. So these are the two, false classification, and these are the true classifications. So we want to find the total accuracy. You add the true positive and the true negative. This is, for example, this is an example of two classes, good, bad, that's it, okay? So true positive, it was positive, and you said it is positive, so it was true, and or negative, and you said it's negative. So you add these two, and you divide by the summation of all of them, the true positive, the true negative, and also the false positive and the false negative. And of course, the higher, the better. That is, this is, this is the most, or the fundamental metric we use. Also, there is, this is something very important called the confusion matrix. In the confusion matrix, sometimes you get overall a very high accuracy, but there are certain classes, and we'll come to this reason why this happens, they have very low accuracy. So here, for example, these are the classes. One is yes, one is no, okay? And this is how you classify them as yes or no. 
So if you if it, if the case was yes, and you classify it as yes, this is called as I mentioned true positive. If the class is no, and you classify it as no, then you this is the true negative. Now, if the class was really yes, and you said no, this is false negative, and here it is the the false the false positive. So we want the the uh, confusion matrix give you more in depth is how good or how bad is your uh, classification. Then we have the precision, the recall, and the F1. And again, we are using these four values, true positive, for example, the precision, the true positive divided by the true positive plus the false uh, positive. Uh, recall, true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. Again, all these metrics, the higher, the higher the, the better. But they give you more insight about certain aspects and we'll describe them later, later on. The last thing I would like to show, okay, in the first set of tutorials, we'll talk about uh, ANN or artificial neural network. And ANN is one of the classifier that can be used for both regression and classification. Not every classifiers can be used for, for both. Some classifiers are only used for regression, and some of them they are only using for classification problem. So basically, what is neural network? Basically, you have your input, we call it input vector. This input vector, this comes from your label data. Let's assume that we are uh, I'm trying to uh, classify, uh, let's say something is hot. Okay, so one of the, uh, uh, Victor is the color of the image uh, from an IR camera, for example, or it could be the temperature, or it could be the humidity. You can have different features we use to classify if this object, uh, how much is the temperature that you will uh, you will have. So in regression, you predict, as I said, a number. Now between the prediction, which is your output, and the input, there are the hidden and the input layers. And these hidden layers, you will specify them. Now, what does those layers do? They map. They map the input with the output. And they use nonlinear functions, especially if the relation is nonlinear between the input and, and the output. The good news is that you don't need to worry about it. You don't need to do anything. You just select certain parameters. And those functions and those weights, they are adjusted automatically inside your neural network until there is a good match between the input and the output, then we said you have a trained neural network. How to make sure that it is working? Then you test it. Then you bring different data than this one and you try to see, am I getting uh, the right output or, or not? Again, for the classification, it's very similar to regression, except in the output, instead of having a number, you will have you will have a class okay so this is a nutshell very simple uh, introduction about uh, machine learning and uh, for those who they have no clue this is what you need to know at this stage to know about machine learning as we progress in this set of tutorials i will provide a little bit more and more information about machine learning till then thank you for listening and uh, see you in another another uh, lecture. Bye now.